tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a Blender game that will load a second level and pa pass parameters like the score to the second level. If we look at the logic bricks, this property sensor senses when the score equals 5. When it does, it sends a signal to a game actuator which will save the score and another game actuator which will load the second level. If I press P on the keyboard to run this, press A and 1 is added to the score. We're waiting for it to go to 5, so when I press A now, the second level is loaded. And the score of 5 is carried over to the second level, so when I press A again, the score goes on to 6, and so on. I'm going to create an even simpler version to explain the underlying principles. So I'm in a new Blender document. I'm going to go to Game Logic Layout. I'm going to add a property which I'm going to call Score. I'm going to make that property integer whole number, and I'm going to click this button to display in the debug area, which we need to turn on. So we need to go to Blender Game Engine, and we need to in the Game menu show debug properties. Now if I press uh, P to play or click start to start the game engine the score is displayed in the top left hand corner. Press escape to stop the game engine. Now for some logic bricks. So I'm going to zoom in here. Uh, shift and middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to add a sensor, a keyboard sensor. And I'm going to give it a meaningful name, I'm going to call it uh, press A and if you click here it says press any key and I'm pressing the, the letter A uh, and the controller I want is uh, a Python controller and uh, I'll give this a meaningful name update and now we need to add a Python script if I go into text, script templates, uh, there's a game logic basic. I'm going to use that. Um, it's given it the name uh, game logic basic, so I'm going to call this update score. Um, and what am I going to do here? I don't want an actuator, so I'm going to delete that line, and I don't want uh, any of those three lines. And my sensor isn't called my sensor; it's called press A. And if that is pressed, I want the owner object its score property plus equals one. I don't know whether plus plus would work there but that increments the score. Uh, I have to link those up so uh, put the script in there, link that up, press start, press the letter A, and the score is incremented. Press escape. The next line of code brings us to the central point of this tutorial. If I go back to the first example, this is the line. And we have the Blender game engine, the logic module, we have a global dictionary object and it can have any property added to it and here it's got a score property and we're updating it with the current score. Uh, let me just say where did I get this file from? Well I got it from this book which um, the Blender Game Kit 2nd Edition from the Blender Foundation um, it's a very good book with lots of good examples in, but I wouldn't pay 30 odd pounds for it because it was written for version 2.49 and uh, lots of good examples, but they all need a lot of uh, 
modifications to make them work with Blender 2.5. Going back to our global um, dictionary, here is the documentation for the game engine on the Blender site and here is uh, the description of the global dictionary. It says a dictionary that is saved between loading blend files so you can use it to store inventory and other variables you want to store between scenes and blend files. It says it can also be written to a file and loaded later on with the game engine load save actuators. So the implication there is that um, the uh, global dictionary stays global and active in between loading blender files and saving it is an option. So I'm going to have a go without saving. I'm going to copy this line and put it into my new Blender file. I'm pressing Control V to paste. Um, now the um, the other version there was a capital S for score uh, it's a separate uh, property so it could have a capital S this one would have to be a small s um, property names are case sensitive okay so we will we're updating the global dictionary when we press the letter A what happens when we get to a certain score and want to load the next level. So I'm going to add another sensor. I'm going to add a property sensor and this will look for the score and when it gets to a certain value, let's be different here and put 4, when it's equal to that it will send a signal and what do we want to send a signal to? Well we're going to put it straight through an AND gate and we want a game actuator and we want to uh, start a game from a file and the file will call level2.blend and link that up and We need to save that, so uh, I'm going to do uh, save as, and I'm going to call it level 1. Now we need to do a file new, and I'm going to delete the cube so that we know something has happened. I'm going to add mesh uh, cone, and I'm going to save this and I'm going to call this level 2 and I'm going to open recent uh, and now I'm going to start this and hopefully when we get to when I press this the cube changes to a cone. Press escape just to recap what we've done, we've uh, created a very basic uh, Blender game. Uh, when the keyboard A is pressed, uh, a signal is sent to a Python script that will update a score property. Um, but that score is also copied to the global dictionary. And when a score is reached, um, a game actuator will load the next level. We've created the next level but at the moment there's nothing in the second level to pick up the score from the first level. I'll show you how to do that in the second part of the tutorial so I'll um, end there. Thanks for watching and goodbye.